Hey crazies, I don't think we've done enough cosmology videos yet. There's still one big question we need to answer. How do we know the universe is expanding? Well, we've got a lot of data to back up that claim. The Planck telescope really came through for us. But the most famous is probably the redshift of light. What's a redshift? It's a shift in wavelength toward the... What's a wavelength? Uh... All right, the things we measure about waves are kind of unusual. So let's start with a quick review. Waves have two basic properties. Wavelength, which is the length of a complete cycle measured with a ruler, and frequency, which is how often peaks pass one spot. These two properties combine to give you a speed, but how quickly a wave moves really only depends on the stuff that's doing the waving. For light, that's the electromagnetic field. I'm doing this because, you know, it's, it's everywhere. Anyway, since the fundamental properties of the electromagnetic field never change, neither does the speed of light. That means we can draw something like this, the visible spectrum, all the colors that can be matched with a single wavelength of light. But since the speed of light never changes, we can also match them with the frequencies of light. Under some conditions, the color of light can actually change. If it shifts toward the blue end of the spectrum, we say it blue shifted. If it shifts toward the red end, we say it red shifted. It's that simple. We keep the same concept of shifting when we write it mathematically. Since light is emitted with a certain wavelength, we expect it to be received or observed with the same wavelength. In other words, we expect this ratio to be equal to one. But sometimes it's not. If not, we say a redshift has been added. The Doppler effect is one way light can change color, and it's something you're familiar with, but with sound. Listen to the sound of this engine. As the car approaches, the frequency is higher than it should be. But once it passes and is moving away, the frequency is lower than it should be. The same kind of thing happens with the light from the car, but it's harder to notice. If you relate the wavelengths to the car's speed, you can see the problem. Since light is so fast, this ratio is roughly one for any normal car speed. Our eyes aren't that sensitive. These two squares are different colors. But how many of you can actually tell? I certainly can't. After playing around with a few wavelength to red, green, blue converters, I found I can tell the difference between one nanometer in color. Just barely, but I can do it. To see even that much change with a car, it would have to be going at about a million miles per hour. Luckily, we have better tools than our eyes for detecting this when it comes to stars. Cosmological redshift is not caused by the Doppler effect. I know, there's a method to my madness, okay? As annoying as he is, Nerd Clone is usually right, and this is no exception. I sure am. Besides the Doppler effect, there are two other sources of redshift, gravity and the expansion of space. Light redshifts as it escapes from a source of gravity. This is more apparent when the gravity is strong, like the light emitted by the accretion disk around a black hole. The expansion of space can also cause a redshift in the light traveling through it. But that expansion is slow, so the light has to be traveling a long time for us to notice. With the light coming from stuff close by, you get it mixed up with the other two sources of redshift. Like I said in a previous video, yes, super clusters. We don't see the expansion on scales any smaller than that because other forces like gravity are strong enough to hold things together in spite of the expansion. My point is the cosmological redshift is not the result of a galaxy's speed away from us. It is not the Doppler effect. You've been lied to. It's the result of space stretching along the trip. When light travels between galactic superclusters, that light gets stretched as the space it's traveling through stretches. The more time that light travels, the more expansion it experiences. Remember that scale factor from the flower metric? The thing that tells you how big those space infinitesimals have gotten? We can actually write the redshift in terms of that. It compares the scale factor back then to what it is now. The data shows that the further back in time we look, the bigger the redshift, meaning there's more expansion between us. The cosmic microwave background is the oldest light in the universe. It was emitted so long ago that it isn't even visible light anymore. Now it's microwave light. That's a redshift of over a thousand. We can even see how fast the scale factor is changing, which tells us the universe is expanding faster now than it was in the past. It's accelerating! That's another thing to add to the list of info we get from light. Unfortunately, to know that there's even been a redshift, we need to know what color the light was supposed to be. But that's a topic for another video. And don't worry, Aethrasher, I've started a list for every time I've said that.
Anyway, crazies, if you've got any questions about Redshift, please ask in the comments. Thanks for liking and sharing this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to keep up with us. A special thanks goes out to Patreon patrons like Clint Cloys, who help keep us going. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy.